We're here with Mr. Aquino. Mr. Aquino, well, what made you decide to run for uh, District 1, sir? Thank you. Yes, uh, my name is Anthony Aquino. I'm the uh, pastor of Cal Island Baptist Church, and uh, I decided to run because I want to represent the people. I think there are some obvious things that have been that have been neglected in our communities, primarily our roads are in disrepair, and year after year after year, they remain neglected. And uh, so I want to do, a, do something about it. I want to fix that problem. And I've got a plan for that, and I've spoken to certain construction companies, and I want to move forward on that because we use the roads. Everyone uses them. Uh, our children, I watch these school buses take certain roads two times a day. That Literally, it looks like uh, you've got to play... Uh, you know, you've got to, it's almost an obstacle course to get through some of them. So that's primarily the reason why I'm running. The other reason I decided to run was the out-of-control spending, the city uh, budget that's, that's put us in $1.8 billion in debt, and the different priorities that we have, uh, our city council has put certain things in higher priorities that shouldn't be, such as a $10 million golf clubhouse. Um, and uh, the, given the city manager a 10% raise, where now he makes more money than the city manager of Lo Los Angeles, California, more money than San Antonio, more money than the city manager in Arlington, Texas. And so there's these types of things where we are spending money not on wants and not the needs of our city, the needs of our family. I think that there is some, let me see how I can say this, I think there's just Politics have been so just the usual business or business as usual. And that's what I have noticed that I'm taking on and challenging is that it just seems like we just vote for the same people and keep getting the same results. And, you know, the same people come into this race with the same special interests. Uh, and I want to break that mold. I want to do something for the people. I don't have any special interests. I am a pastor. I'm concerned for people. I'm concerned for families. I'm concerned for all the citizens of Corpus Christi, or the citizens of District One specifically. And I don't come. I'm not a, you know, I'm not a businessman trying to, uh, you know, accumulate business contacts. I'm someone who's seen things going around, I've seen things that are happening, and I want to do something about it and represent the people in the right way. I don't have any other ancillary benefit for running for office. I don't. There's no so, some kind of side deal I've made with anyone. I want to represent the people with integrity. I don't want to. I want to represent our district and make something happen for them. And here's what what else I want to do. If if things don't happen, I want to be able to come back to the people and specifically tell them this is why this road this road isn't fixed. This is who to blame. So I plan on having a weekly roads report where I uh, have a video, uh, a time where our people can conference with me. I want to give our community an update as to what's being, uh, what, what's being done that week to see that our roads are fixed and repaired, and, I want, and so I can take feedback from people, citizens in my district as well. I really want to make something happen. I tell people that uh, it's time for us to turn over some tables, Matthew 21, 12, in the scriptures where it talks about Jesus turning over tables in the temple because he was tired of business as, business as usual. Now, I speak metaphorically in that regard, but it really is. It's time to upend these things. Stop voting for the same people. Stop voting for the same type of politician. Uh, I, you know, let's vote for some change, some real change, and that's what I want to bring. I call my, my campaign um, government by golden rule, Matthew seven twelve, where Jesus says, do unto others as you would have done unto you. And if you treat people the way that, in, with that as your guide, well, you're not going to spend people's money recklessly. You're not going to take backroom deals. You're going to do what you said you're going to do. If I'm going to treat my neighbor, regardless as to who that is, the way I want to be treated, then I'm going to keep the promises that I make, and I'm going to have accountability. And so that's, uh, again, those are some things that, some specific items. You know, so many times people, they just go and they just check a name at the, for city council, and I want to give people a reason to vote for something, not just sending a person, but sending an issue, sending a cause to city council. And I'm attaching those causes to my name because uh, I'm going to, Lord willing, I'm going to do something about it, or I'm going to be able to come back to my constituents and tell them this is why and this is who you can blame for these things not happening. As an issue, I am for desalinization. Uh, if the city needs the water, okay, we need to find a good source for it. We need to explore all sources. But I will say this, 
uh, we don't need to have a desalinization plant that's in the inner harbor that's going to potentially harm our environment um, and harm our, you know, fishing industry. So we need to explore other locations farther out in the Gulf where the brine that comes from the uh, desalinated water can be distributed in a manner that doesn't harm the environment in our inner harbor. So uh, I am, again, desalinization is an option that I'm not against. I'm, I'm actually for it. But here's the other thing about it. Why must our citizens be the only ones right now? That's the proposal on city council. The present city council has moved forward to have a desalinization plant built in the inner harbor, paid for only by the citizens of Corpus Christi. Of course, we know why we need the water, because of the industry, because of port, uh, because of the, uh, the businesses, or excuse me, the industry that's in the port there. So why not have them share the cost of it? Why does why the city of Corpus Christi, why do the citizens, you and I, why are we the only ones left to foot the bill? We need the water because industry. Industry is great. It provides jobs. I get that. But we don't need more. We, we don't need to add to the financial burden of our citizens of Corpus Christi. Here's something else I would say. So, again, very specifically, I'm for desalinization, just not in the inner harbor, and I don't want our citizens to be the only ones paying for it. Now, secondly, uh, we need to lower our water fees, lower our property taxes. We need to get rid of uh, – I mean, we have wastewater fees that are – I can't even begin to explain that. We gave our city manager, again, this massive raise. We have to pay for it. We're, we, um, The city council has proposed, again, as I mentioned, a $10 million golf clubhouse at Oso Creek. I play golf. I'm not against golf. My son plays golf. Golf is a great sport. But in a time in our, in, in, in our city right now where we are, our budget is $1.8 billion when we need water and our roads are got to be the worst roads of any major city in Texas. And this is a dangerous thing again for our young people, for our schools, for our families. When those are the types of things that are happening, our roads are crumbling. No one's fixing them. Certainly not the speed they need to be fixed. Why do we need to go drop $10 million for a it's not even a, a uh, they already have a clubhouse, a $10 million clubhouse, renovated clubhouse for Oso Creek Golf. There's something about that just doesn't seem right to me. And I don't think it's right for the citizens of Corpus Christi. And so I'm going to do something about it. And I ask for people's votes. I ask them to give me a chance. Uh, hold me accountable. I care about people and I care about this. We have to, I'm sorry, we have to balance the budget. We can't just go around taxing people more and more. Here, I'll tax you for this. I'm going to tax you for that. As a pastor, I have to speak. I have to consider every all the, all the money that comes to my church is a donation. Someone worked hard for that. Someone chose to give that to the ministry of, of Cal Allen Baptist Church. So I consider the money, it's a donation, not a demand. Why can't our city council view public money that way? Stop looking at it like it's a tax. Stop looking at it like it's something, a, a demand. Look at it like a donation someone's given you to steward over to make the best decision possible for the people of Corpus Christi. And that isn't, look, that isn't taking place right now. Not Certainly not with a large part of the city council. There are some good members on there, but uh, I think we can do much better in District 1, and that's why I'm running. Yes, sir. You make some rather salient points. Uh, I mean, I, 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 feel, I feel you on the roads, as the young folks say. Uh, I tell you, I ride a 2005 ha uh, Harley Fat Boy, and, and it, you ride a motorcycle, you become even more intimately aware of how dangerous these roads are. I have one son who's 17, one who's about to be 16. I don't want my teenagers driving on roads that they have to swerve back and forth. And, and, and they get neglected. Year and You'll hear these people, well, we're doing this, we're doing that. Well, it ain't happening in my neighborhood, and it isn't happening in my, you know, the neighborhood down the street. Let's fix these residential roads once and for all. And if we can't get them fixed, let's find out who's stopping the process. Because, you know, when your roads look like the way ours do, it's hard to convince businesses to move in. It's hard to convince home builders to, to build new homes when we neglect the basic things such as our streets. And it's time for that to end. Stop voting. Let's vote for real change. I say this as a pastor. I say it's time to make the streets of Corpus Christi unholy. And, of course, I mean by making them, uh, our, our roads fixed and smooth and, and, and drivable. And so... Um, you know, I'm, is, is it, I mean, somebody said, what are, the, are you just about roads? No, I'm not. I'm about finding water solutions that, that don't cost our citizens, you know, that our citizens don't shoulder the, right now the city of, uh, city of Corpus Christi, the desalinization plant they, they have voted to move forward with uh, is, is going to be uh, sh the price, all that's going to be paid for, the, for by the citizens, none by the port, none by industry. And uh, I think that's wrong. 
they're 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 not focusing on the right things. We've got many stray animals. We need to find a humane real, way to deal with with the the dogs that are oftentimes roaming in our streets. And so it's just these basic things that have been neglected. Why? I'm not sure why. I think possibly fixing roads that have been neglected for years don't make for good photo opportunities. Um, you can't go outside and take a picture next to a pothole that isn't there any longer. It's not going to be- benefit you politically. But I'm fed up with being concerned about things that are political. I want to make things happen to improve our communities for working families, for, for individuals just like me and, 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 and you, and uh, for everybody. Um, doesn't matter what stripe or what church you go to or, what, or don't go. The point is, is that we all think potholes are sin and then. So my name is the first one on the ballot, Anthony Aquino, both A's, Anthony Aquino. It's the, I'm the first one on the ballot, and I say, people, I say to people, save your time and your money, and just check the first person uh, under City Council District 1. 